Hello everybody and welcome to Dimehead. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can back up the configuration and the presets of your NAND player pedal as well as upgrade it to the latest firmware version. In the first segment of the video, I'm going to showcase how you can back up the configuration and the presets of your NAND player pedal. You might be asking yourself why that would be necessary in the first place. Usually, before doing a firmware upgrade, it's always advised whenever you are on the NAND player pedal or any other device actually, matter of fact, to back up the configuration of that respective device. In the case of the NAND player pedal, it's no difference. So what we want to do is we want to first ensure that if something goes wrong, even though the chances are pretty low that something will go wrong, that we can revert back to the settings and the configurations and the presets, the tones, which we have created on this pedal in particular. So we're going to do that first. Before we can do that, however, we have to make sure that our USB stick is ready to work with the NAND player pedal. So let's do that first. I have now already entered the USB drive into my PC and it has been recognized over here as the Kingston USB stick. What you want to make sure is that this USB drive is formatted in the proper file system format. You can check this via right clicking and going to the properties and checking over here the file system. I have now tampered with the USB drive so it does not have the correct file system so that we can change this. And I'm going to show you how you can do this on a Windows 11 PC. Now, the process should be fairly similar for whatever operating system you have. However, on Windows 10 and Windows 11 PCs, that's pretty simple. You just right click on the USB drive and then you move to the format section. In the format section, you can choose the file system and you want to choose the FAT32 file system. Normally, USB drives mostly are by default already set to the file system FAT32. Just make sure that this is really the case over here. The reason for that is that NTFS is a proprietary Windows file system and will not work with the NAND player pedal, which is based off on Linux. So we got to check this over here. I'm going to choose the file system FAT32 and I'm going to go over with a quick format over here. Make sure that you really have nothing on the USB drive which is of importance to you. Make sure that you back up that somewhere else because formatting your USB drive will delete all of the files on that respective drive. In this case, I'm absolutely okay with formatting it, so I'm going to proceed. After a few seconds, the format is complete over here because I've chosen the quick format option so I can press OK and I can safely eject the USB drive to back up my configuration on the NAND player pedal. The next step would be to take my USB drive, which I just formatted, and enter that into the USB slot on the rear of the NAND player pedal. You will be prompted first by the import NAM IR menu. You can close that because we don't need anything out of that. However, you want to use the param knob and button to scroll to the settings menu, which is this icon over here. Press the param button in order to enter the menu and then move to the third page over here and choose the export to USB function. It's going to ask you now if you really want to export the configurations and the presets as the file namplayer0.npb onto the USB stick. I'm okay with that, so I'm just going to press on start. The process, which now starts, is going to take around about one to two minutes, depending on the size of your configurations over here. So I'm just going to wait until it's done. All right, the export of the configuration has taken around about one minute. So now we're 100% done, so I can click the param button in order to close the menu, move out of the menu, and then I can simply eject the USB drive out of the NAND player pedal and place it back into my PC over here. The USB drive has again been recognized by my PC over here, and as you can see, now we got the file nandplayer0.npb in here. I can now take that file and simply copy it wherever I want to back up my configuration, just to leave it there in case I need it. I personally have made my own folder structure where I just set in the um, date, basically, and also the reason why I was doing the backup, for example, firmware upgrade or something, just that I got that as a measurement. But over here right now, for demonstration purposes, I'm just pushing that into the download folder section. Now I can just simply go ahead and empty again the USB stick. It's not necessary to do that actually, but I just want to keep things clean in that respect. And now we can move over to the next step, upgrading the firmware of your NAND player pedal. 
Upgrading the firmware of your NAND player pedal is quite straightforward. In order to download the firmware file, you want to head over to dimehead.de, which is the official website of Dimehead, and then move over to the firmware tab over here, click on that one, and you will be prompted with the firmware page. Over here, you got some instructions how to do the actual firmware update in case you just got to read through that once again, or you don't have access to this video over here. But basically, you're gonna scroll down to the respective firmware download tree, and here you can find the latest version, which I'm just gonna download over here. It's gonna push it into my download folder, and I'm gonna push that in turn onto the USB stick. So as you can see over here in the download folder, I got the NAND player 1.0.1 zip file. So I'm gonna unpack that with any extracting program. I'm gonna use WinRAR for this, but you can use also the Windows board tools, which are on board. And then you want to take these three files, the firmware itself and the boot signature and image and place that onto the USB stick like so. Once that is done, we can now again eject the USB drive and head over to the NAND player pedal. We're now back at the NAND player pedal and we now want to upgrade the firmware. In order to do so, what we first want to do is we want to actually turn off the power by just taking out the power supply and then we're going to enter our USB stick with the firmware version onto the USB slot over here and then we're going to enter back in the power supply while pressing the button number four like so. We got to hold that button and hold it until the menu pops up where we can apply the firmware upgrade. This is going to take around about five to 10 seconds. Since the exposure was quite bright on the camera and you could not see the screen, I toned that down a little bit. Hopefully you can now see what's going on. We now got the update firmware menu where we can either choose to factory reset this or if we can update the firmware. We want to update the firmware in this case. It's gonna ask us if we really want to do the upgrade. It's gonna show us from what version we are coming from and to what version we are going to jump. In my case, it's basically a one-to-one -one thing. So I already have the latest firmware applied, but I'm just gonna reapply this one. So I'm gonna select yes over here, and it's now gonna do the update of the firmware. In this case, it's gonna take around about half a minute, but it can take longer depending on the scope of the firmware, depending on how much has changed actually. So over here, you can already see that it's already done while I was talking and I can now restart the device by simply taking out the power supply and pushing it back in. Now that the device has booted up, I can now check if the firmware has actually been applied by moving via the program button into the settings menu and then again moving onto the last page where we got the system info we go and in the first column or in the first row you can see the actual firmware version which is currently applied which is 1.0.1 so i can now say that the firmware has been applied correctly now that you got the configuration backed up on your pc as well as the nam player updated to the latest firmware version you can rock out with confidence that everything should be working the best as it can and if not that you still got everything so that you can go back to the previous setting <coughs>